Hello, good morning everyone. Love to see you, so many smiley faces out there. Um, I'm mainly going to talk about uh, pride um, and then a fall, but, um, and then some observations about the, the industry um, that I'm going to make from a quite a personal level, so you can beat me up about them later on. Um, so in terms of being proud, um, obviously proud to be on the stage at the Daily Do Media Summit. Bucket list ticked off there. Um, <clears throat> uh, proud that the medium is delivering intelligent campaigns at scale, um, and uh, you know, kind of, this is something that we can all be very proud of. Um, proud that GV is 10 years old this year. Um, it's been uh, a long journey um, through interesting times. It's got pretty squeaky at, at certain points, 2008, 2009, but we made it through. Um, and uh, mostly proud of the work that we've delivered over those 10 years. As has been mentioned, actually, when we started out, there was basically Tottenham Court Road, Tube Station, DEPs. So those aren't, that wasn't, that's not actually Tottenham Court Road, but, and, uh, you know, that was pretty much it. There was, there was Transvision. Um, one of the first campaigns that that I felt kind of put us on the map and made people think a little bit more about the power of digital out of home um, was Rocky, Rocky Balboa, um, and it was, uh, you know, it was just a perfect um, uh, coming together of some creative that we produced where Rocky runs up the escalators and it was so iconic and it's, you know, it said so much about the movie. This went in charge on the 1st of January 2006 when there were three stations in London that had DEPs. And I was so excited about the fact that this was going up and it was going to look so cool that um, I got up at, and went into London at 6 a.m. on the 1st of January um, to go and see how cool it looked. Um, didn't realize I was going to have to um, kind of run the gamut of drunk party goers coming back from New Year's Eve, vomit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, it, it, it was awesome and it kind of, you know, that kind of started the journey. Um, I think since 2010, um, we've really, so we got through the recession and everything started to grow and campaigns could become more complex and interesting and I kind of think that since 2010, certainly at GV, we've been swimming in this kind of beautiful creative technology gravy and um, here are some examples of, um, of, of, of recent work. <laughs> Got a great team at, at Grand Visual. Um, had a, uh, really kind of started with Dan Dawson um, back in 2005 as our creative technology director, and it's you know it's been it's been a great journey with those people. Lots of lovely people and lots of lovely people and friends in the industry who have been along for the ride as well. Very proud of that, um, and also proud of the fact that I think we brought into the market an essential offering. I don't think um, it might be big-headed, but I don't think we'd be where we are today together um, without having um, offerings like Grand Visuals and, and obviously um, Live Poster and EnigmaDo.com. People are coming into the space um, and it's, it's important that I think that we are there. Um, 
So it's a, kind of a tenth, a, a theme around 10, 10th birthday, and I'm going to make uh, 10 observations um, about the industry that, as I see it, um, and uh, we can see how we get on. So first up, and they're numbered so you can see the, uh, see the progress. Um, what's happened is that we've had, there's a certain amount of categorization that's occurred in the last few years, which I think is very useful. Categorization around types of campaigns that are running. So this means that we have some common language and from agency through production, media owner, delivery, um, we have an understanding about what type of campaign is coming up. Um, the first type um, is the simplest type, linear, video, JPEG, you know, static, um, a kind of a beginning, a middle, and an end, something that's going to sit in a loop and play out, um, and, uh, and is the majority of the campaigns that we see running in, on Digital Out of Home um, in the UK at the moment. Um, so that's a nice, simple one. Dynamic. Um, so feeds some kind of triggered creative uh, weather, um, possibly automatic. Um, here's the world of opportunity and the world of possibility that, um, that we can really get into. Um, more complex, obviously. And interactive somehow, so that might be touchscreen or AR or mobile delivered. Um, <clears throat> but um, again, this is, this is also going to be even more complex. Um, so what we have here is kind of very simplistically, and I'm sure it will evolve, um, is we have three different types of campaigns that could be running. And I think it's, a, it's an indication of the maturing of the medium um, that we can start to see these trends. And, and also that you can go into different stakeholders and understand whether it's a creative agency or a media agency or the media owner, um, they understand this kind of taxonomy, um, which is useful. Um, the one thing that's not useful is that sometimes it's not properly communicated and you end up getting into a project and find out that actually everybody in this kind of virtual joint production team or project team doesn't know exactly what's going on and that's where things start to fail um, and, uh, and, you know, and there are problems. My second point is about investment. Um, there's obviously been huge investment in infrastructure, in sites and hardware and back end. And that's really driven the market. And a lot of you guys have put all of that in. Um, I, uh, I do wonder about the investment in people. Um, the transition from traditional to digital requires a different mindset and a different skill set. And I do wonder whether the market has invested to the same level in its talent um, as it has in the hardware and, and infrastructure. Just a kind of personal story for Grand Visual. Um, if we look at, and this is interesting for, for all of us, if we look at our revenues by type of campaign that we deliver, type of project that we deliver, and we track those against each other, so here we've got linear versus dynamic and interactive, um, we'll see that actually linear, the dynamic and interactive has, 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 has crossed over and become far more important to us as a business. Um, you'll be pleased to know that linear is growing year on year, so that's in a very healthy state. It's just that dynamic and interactive um, over the last three, four years has really powered on, which means that um, in Grand Visual, our workforce has changed. Um, so today, we have... 12 software developers sitting in the office and five motion graphics artists, animators. So that's kind of dynamic versus linear. So we've got more than double the number of dynamic operatives um, as, as opposed to, in our world, kind of traditional animators. Um, that's, you know, that's something that we've had to do. Um, and I think that it's, it's a topic that needs to be given some priority um, around the industry. Um, I'll, 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 I'll touch on it again uh, in a moment. Um, investment in talent. Okay, moving on. Scalable campaigns. So what's interesting is that obviously across the world we're starting to see digital inventory cropping up in, in multiple markets. The same kind of stuff that we have here. London, London and the UK has been a lead 
market around the world in terms of, of, the, um, of, of, of the inventory and the opportunity, the digital opportunity. Um, but we're now seeing that in pretty much every market. Um, so this is quite interesting because now digital out of home becomes a medium where a global client can leverage creative and production across multiple markets and it starts to make a lot more sense for them. Um, obviously, creating uh, for one format in one station is, you know, is X amount, but I can take that and I can leverage that across multiple, multiple markets. Um, an example of this is um, looking at an unnamed big film client that we work for um, and looking back over a recent period at a number of their releases. And what you can see here is a very, funnily enough, very clear trend of how they have and how we have been delivering to increasing number of markets and increasing number of formats as well. So this is, I think, an interesting um, indication of globally where Ditch Out of Home is going to be playing a role. Um, 24 countries for that last release, you know, this is, this is really significant stuff. Um, and it makes a lot of sense for the client because these are base assets, there's a toolkit that can be shipped out, farmed out to, to those, to those uh, different markets. This is all linear work. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it uh, kind of in a linear world where you're essentially having master animations that you can then <clears throat> repurpose um, for different formats, even 118 different formats. Um, not, the, not the biggest campaign we've ever done, to be honest. Um, the Facebook campaign in the UK was over 500 pieces of copy that went out. We can achieve this as well with interactive. Um, and here's a quick uh, little movie about Sunset Overdrive. Went out in three markets. Basically the same experience, but delivered around the world for Xbox. So with all of this cross-border activity, um, you'd think that um, our, our new offering in New York, um, we've been there for 12 months, is rocking and rolling. Um, and to be fair to Ben Puntland and his team out there, actually they have been doing quite well with campaigns for Nokia Lumia and the Xbox and uh, something out right now, a big one out for Coke um, and Disney uh, and Fidelity. Um, but it's a very different space. Um, quite frustrating, quite conservative, and very little dynamic, and very little interactive activity going on there. And I suppose this is a very quick point. Um, whatever your gripes about the UK, um, it's an incredibly rich ecosystem to be operating in. We should be grateful and thankful for that. Um, and uh, yeah. So, smarter creative. Um, now, stupidly, in the title for this, I actually put in a delivering innovation at scale, and I and now wish I hadn't put innovation in there, because tactical and smart creative, enhanced creative, data-driven, contextual, you know, kind of tailored and targeted, um, is something that we should be aiming for. Um, and 
this shouldn't be innovation. This should be seen as everyday standard. Um, uh, we, shouldn't, we should not be putting dynamic into that innovation box and giving it that badge. We should be pushing for this to be something that we do all of the time. Um, you know, it should be the norm. You know, it's kind of, it's, uh, it's, it's stuff that can happen quite easily with feeds and with data coming in. through all of those examples, there's just a wealth of data out there that can make these campaigns smarter, more relevant, um, and, and, you know, and actually work harder. So um, these are some figures that I pulled out from a really nice, a really good um, study by Postscope. And, um, and so just, just to kind of illustrate this point, 61% uh, of marketers want real time in their digital out of home. Um, uh, less than 5% of campaigns that run at the moment have any kind of dynamic element. So we've got massive headroom from that 5 to the 61. Um, you know, that is, is something that we should be working on. As I say, we should be challenging briefs every day, saying why wouldn't this be an enhanced smart campaign? These are ideas where this could be an enhanced smart campaign. Going back to my talent observation, Slight caution, what happens when we 12x the dynamic campaigns that are running in the market? They're more complex, they're harder to deliver. Who's going to deliver those? Um, it could be interesting. The good news is that uh, it's a kind of a repeat business bit of news. Um, these smart campaigns uh, work well. Um, clients like them. Benadryl is in its third year this year. Uh, Google Outside has run twice, Sky Difference has run twice, so if we can get this stuff right, clients come back. Observation six, uh, creative agencies are key influencers. Um, I don't, I'm not sure we have any representatives in the room, but um, yes they are. Um, they're very important in the process. Um, do, they, do they provide that influence for um, smart, the smarter campaigns that I'm talking about? Uh, no, not always. Um, why is that? I think that they have some issues around workflow. These campaigns need agility. Um, they need a, a, a very responsive uh, project team working together. And I think that creative agencies can sometimes um, struggle to keep pace with the pace that's required. There are so many concepts that we've been through which have been watered down and watered down and we've turned into a linear campaign from something that would have been intelligent, smart, and clever. Um, I think the challenge here is for us to make it easier for them. And I think the challenge is that we need to deliver the message uh, with at least with two, at 
try to be with one voice. Maybe that's something that the OMC will be taking on. I'm sure we all go out and talk to creative agencies separately, um, and they may just be getting a, little bit, a bit of a, a muddled message. Um, but they are key influencers, and we should be working to get them on board. Sean talked about um, audit. Uh, reporting is inevitable. Um, we want a truly digital medium. We want flexibility, intelligence, speed, and relevance, um, which means it's a complex medium, which means that there are many, many permutations for any given smart campaign, um, and visibility of those permutations is absolutely vital, and everybody in the chain needs to have that visibility from clients through media, agency, creative agency, um, production or, or outfit, um, and of course, um, network. Um, and uh, and it's, it's obviously not really there. As an example of this, um, I could uh, look at the Missing People campaign. So this is a campaign that we've been involved in since 2012. Um, really important, um, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an important piece of work that, uh, that we've enjoyed being on. Um, and, uh, and it's quite interesting because I think actually it, it gives us a view of, of future campaigns. It's based around availability of media because it's a charity and you know, that's the way it has to work. Um, it has dynamic creative. It uh, is driven by data that's coming in from a third party, from the police. And it's hugely time sensitive because uh, alerts have to go up when needed, but when somebody's found, those alerts have to come down. Um, you know, that's a kind of a key, a key requirement. Um, looking at key requirements for the client, um, the client has voiced these as their key requirements. Visibility of what is actually live. Can I tell right now through a dashboard somehow that, that the right alerts are up in the right regions? Um, I don't need to have a missing person from the northeast uh, you know, in the southwest. Um, and also, can I tell, because it's availability conditional, can I tell what media is actually being used at any particular point in the campaign? Obviously, I'm going to say that it's not really working like that. Um, this, is the, this is kind of how it goes. You know, they, they deliver that data. Um, and what we don't have right now is a back channel to tell us, client, what's actually out there, what's playing. I can't get that data from the media owner partners. Um, so we don't know whether, in fact, Nicola is playing right now. We, we know what was published, but we can't put that back against any data that's coming from the networks. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting conundrum. Um, we have, in the latest version of the campaign, we have a mechanism by which we could get that data, but only two out of the ten media owners that are partnering on this have agreed to let that run. So, you know, I think it... Reporting is inevitable. Um, we need to work out how it's going to work. Point eight. Uh, the great thing about Digital Out of Home is that it's, it's rich, it's agile, and it's more able to play its part in the big idea. And I think this is really where the future lies for Digital Out of Home. You know, it could be more than just support for a big idea. It can, be, it can really be an active element that plays a role in a multi-layered campaign um, and very powerful. Um, you know, a couple of examples. Um, we've got uh, a recent run Oreo Eclipse, a national event, and you've got Dish Out of Home and Social and Press all working together for that day, um, doing a great job um, and supporting each other. My personal favorite um, is this, a few years old now, apologize, but uh, Link's Apollo, um, big idea, um, big insight, astronauts get laid, that's the, the big thing. Um, so they're pushing for people to sign up to go into space. Um, very clear objectives, and you've got you know, a whole number of channels um, working to that objective. Um, and Digital Out of Home playing its role very successfully in, in, uh, it, in supporting and being part of this press, PR, um, social, and huge TV campaign piece. Um, I'm going to show you the video, and also an interesting thing, as an aside, is that this campaign featured dynamic, linear, and interactive all in the same, ca same campaign, and I think we're starting to see a lot more of that happening as well um, for, uh, for, for, for the bigger campaign. <laughs>
Apollo space campaign is the biggest thing that Lynx has done in its 30 year history. Three, two, one. I'm Buzz Aldrin. The Lynx Space Academy is looking for regular people to go into space. Space Man, Space Man, take me to your galaxy. Right, so now we've got an interesting one. Point nine. <laughs> so this goes along with uh, specialists are parasites and bastards. And as an outsider to this industry for 10 years, this is the kind of the standoff that I have seen. And funnily enough, I don't think it's particularly helpful. What we've got is, uh, this is where we want to be. Um, what we've got is a medium that's like, it's, it's, it's increasingly complex, and we've got campaigns that are running that involve um, sometimes hourly, daily uh, interfaces between multiple stakeholders. And these people need to work together, and they need to talk to each other. There needs to be good communication and visibility and all of these great project things. Um, and so the old silos and the old attitudes need to dissolve and, and, and basically bugger off, because it's not particularly helpful. Um, we need to work um, across that whole chain um, far more efficiently. And I do say this at my place as well, um, I promise. Um, it's interesting that um, at Old Street for Google, um, we've been working, because it's a long-term holding, we've been working very closely, of course, with, um, with Deco and RGA. Um, and, and Talon, and we've formed a, you know, a really good project team. It's, it's, it's exceptional because it's, because it's a long-term holding, but I think you know, it's kind of um, the way forward. So one team, one dream, people. Um, <clears throat> moving on, and on a really positive note, um, what's happened over my 10 years in this um, is that uh, the younger people have come in, and now we have a whole industry of, 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 of people who have never been without digital out of home. You know, it's not new and emerging, it's, it's always been there. I think this is really positive and that's gonna help us um, move forward. Um, not great for the, some of the dinosaurs, and there are still dinosaurs out there, and they're still getting in the way, but they will die, metaphorically, um, <coughs> and we will be better for that. Uh, right, um, so um, I stole this from uh, a book I just read. Um, it's all about the bike by Rob Penn, which is a great read for any cycling geeks. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, life is like riding a bike. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Um, and I think you know that's that's action is good. You know, it helps to evolve the marketplace. Um, you know, all, all of you have taken action, um, and we need to keep going. You know, we've we've taken action over the years in terms of you know the handbook that we've been publishing with Kinetic. Um, Accelerator, the copy trafficking QA service, you know, 10,000 pieces of copy have gone through Accelerator. Um, open loop um, for dynamic campaign management, you know, kind of these are things that, uh, that we've done to keep things moving forward, as we all are, but we need to carry on. This year we'll be announcing a new suite of software for uh, smarter digital out of home, um, so more on that later. But you know, I kind of end with, uh, yeah, it is big and it is clever. It's been an amazing 10 years. Uh, it is, you know, the, the medium, the channel is delivering intelligent campaigns at scale every day. Not enough of them, but we're getting there. 
The scale means we're not an emerging medium anymore, and we should lose that badge because it is basically a, an excuse for being suboptimal. Um, we must embrace that evolution. It's going to carry on. We must keep moving forward, um, or else we'll fall off the bike, which we don't want to do. Thank you very much.